OK, let's go to. Assignment manager. Which is very much like what you students will see. When you go to assignments, you'll see all of the duh assignments. The instructor assignment manager is a little bit different, but it's got the same stuff. Now let's go to your first set of homework. And I wanted you to see this. You're going to have with almost each homework set. You're going to have the. Um, um, PowerPoint that goes with the class uh, with that lesson. You're going to see the the textbook that goes with the lesson and you're going to see the objectives, the objective videos. Made by the authors of the book. How are you going to get help? Well, look down here at the bottom. You can view an example that will take you step by step. Through how to do the homework problem. The textbook is available. And when you click the textbook here, it goes directly to the part of the textbook that talks about. The particular homework set you're doing. I recommend this just to look through it. Ask my instructor says not available. It's because I'm the instructor, but if you go there, it should be available and say that this was a really hard problem and you wanted to ask me how to do it. Um, you could just click on ask my instructor and you would be able to send me directly to my email a message about that particular version of the problem. It even has a link to that version of the problem so I can see it. Now we also have something that's very popular with students. It's called Skill Builder. And what it is, is it's called Adaptive Help. And I'm in a particular, well, I'm in the teacher part of the book, so I can't see adaptive help. It assumes I already know how to do the homework, which is true. But if you click on Skill Builder, it will take you step by step through the parts of the problem and through other problems that build up to the problem that's giving you a problem. And that's a lot of use of the word problem. So you have lots and lots of help. Also, if we go back to this part of the book and go here, this is your class. And if we yeah, I'm going to go to student view again. And I'm going to. No, it's not going to let me into the book this way. So I'm going to get out of student view. And I'm just going to take you to the book, so I'm going to go to inclusive access. I'm going to go to launch course. And I'm going to take you down to student student links, which you see if you were to go to my lab and mastering course home instead of uh, to do your homework, you're going to and, and to take tests and to take quizzes, you're going to go to all my assignments. But. To go to a lot of the helps. You're going to go to course home. And you can actually get to assignments from course home. You can also get to chapter contents and the ebook. They're basically the same thing. And so you can actually read the book here. 
although I think it's better to read it from the homework. Um, you can go to Multimedia Library, and this is the best part of the book. Suppose you're doing a homework set in section 1.1. You would go to one for the chapter and one for the section. And you could click on select all or you could click on any of these like the PowerPoints or the animations or the multimedia textbook or the videos or the chapter test prep videos. Let's do that. Let's go to the test prep video. And click find now. Down here is a link to the test prep videos. And you could watch it here, watch them here. Or if you wanted to go to College Algebra Essential Videos, all for Section 1.1. Or if you wanted to go to the PowerPoint, there's a link to the PowerPoint. Oh, you get test prep videos because I already marked that. And you would have Section 1.1, the PowerPoint. Or you could just say select all, and find now and get all of, wow, all of the study stuff, the study stuff, the videos, the, the um, animations, that's what these are here, um, or more videos, or the PowerPoints. You would get everything offered for section 1.1, just for 1.1, and you could just spend all your time going through this. So you have so much help, you could never get to it. But here we go, R. It's a review of variables. You already know about variables, so this is gonna be quick. But some of you may have been out of school for a long time. So it'll help. There's never any such thing as too much review. So let's review. These are problems from your homework. This week's homework. Translate the following phrase to an algebraic expression. 23 less than some number, any number. Well, they use in to mean number, and you're given four choices here. So if there's a number that's 23 less than a number, then I would start with a number. And I would say, oh, well, 23 less than is going to be minus 23. And so I would come down here and look for something that looks like n minus 23, and there it is. So all you would have to do is click on C. Then you would get a message in my math lab telling you, congratulations, fantastic, excellent, something like that. You did it right. Now, after some basic problems like this, it eventually gets a little more complicated. Translate the following phrase to an algebraic expression. 25 more than twice a number. Come again. Well, 25 more than half a number. OK, well, how I do it is I would start with a number. And it actually might be any letter, but they use. Oh, look, they use a P and a Q. Oh, that's a different problem. I'm sorry. So, uh, but let's stick with N. It doesn't hurt. So there's my a uh, number. And then I'm going to kind of go backwards because it talks about twice a number. Well, twice a number is two times 
a number. And then 25 more than that would be plus 25. And so after you had worked this out, you would go to my math lab. There's always a blue answer box and you would type 2n plus 25 into the answer box. And it would tell you fantastic, terrific, whatever word it happened to come up with at that particular time. Okay, now before anything else, I am going to draw a line between these because it looked to me like they were the same problem. My lines are always terrible, so I have to cheat and use um, a line, a real line. I love tablets. Tablets are the best thing in the world, I think. Okay, now we're going to evaluate. Evaluating is very important. The word evaluate means find the answer. Find a value for. Okay, so I'm going to make this bigger. I could even make it bigger. If, if it's not big enough, let me know. Now. Let's see. Well, doggone. I've lost my pencils. I'll have to get those back before next time. But right now, we're going to evaluate P over Q. And they have to tell us what P, if they say evaluate, then they have to tell us what P is and they have to tell us what Q is. And here it is. P is negative 15, and G, it's not Q, it's G. G is negative five. So what that means is that P over G is going to be negative 15, divided by negative five. Now you can put this in your calculator or you can just, I mean, it's pretty easy, I think, to do it by hand. You should know this, that when you've got a fraction and you've got a minus sign up here and a minus sign down there, a negative over a negative, they cancel each other out because a negative sign is really the number negative one. So you're canceling negative ones. Now you're left with 15 divided by five. And I know that five into 15 is three. Now, if you wanted to put this in a calculator, you would just say negative 15 divided by negative five either equals or enter depending on your calculator, and it would tell you three. You would put three in the answer box, and then my math lab would tell you how wonderful you are. Now over here, we have, please don't be afraid to un, uh, uh, unmute yourself and say, wait, could I ask you a question? Because that's very important. So don't be afraid to do that. Okay, here, I thought this might be a little bit difficult, okay? Because, let's just come up with another example, 3x. This has nothing to do with that problem, except that there's a number in front of a letter. What this means is that you have three times X, whatever X is. You might not even know what X is, but whenever you have a number in front of a letter, 
it means you're multiplying the letter by that number. Well, 15M really means 15 times M. And then you're dividing by N. And they tell us what M is, and they tell us what N is. So I'm going to rewrite 15 M over N as, well, actually, here's what I'm going to do. If I could find my doggone colored pencils. There they are. Aha! How about blue? No, how about purple? Yes. Okay. Dog. I don't want twelves. I want twos. So let's clear that out and try again. There. I'm going to put parentheses around these. That lets me know I'm talking about different things. OK, enough. All right, I'm going to have 15 times whatever M is 12. Is someone trying to get in? Let me bounce back up here and see. No. OK, or somebody let him in or them in. So thank you. Well, now you know what? I am going to need a calculator and I have an electronic version. Of the TI-84 calculator. This is um, um, a company that, that gives you a free calculator. It's free if you go to Wabbit Emu. So let me stop. And because they're such good guys, write the name of the company if you don't know it, or if you do know it, W-A-B-B-I-T-E-M-U dot O. R G Wabbit Emu. If you go there, you can download um, this calculator that I'm using right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type, I don't have to use parentheses, 15 times 12 divided by 6. Now, I don't know if you can see that. It might be too small. So I'm going to bring this over. And that's what I typed. 15 times 12 divided by 6. And I'm going to hit Enter. And the answer is 30. OK. Now. If that had been a plus sign or a minus sign, I would have had to use parentheses. So let me do this and go back here. And I would have had to put in a left parenthesis around the top if that had been a plus or a minus. And then close the parentheses is what that's called, so that I would have grouped these two together. That's very important. Enter. Well, because I multiplied it by six. OK, well, once again. Divided by six now. There I go. There I go. Pretend you didn't see that. Yes, indeed. OK, destroy the evidence.
we evaluated that. That's all there is to evaluating. You put a number in for a letter, or in this case, that number in for that letter and that number in for that letter, and you either calculate it in your head or you calculate it on paper or you calculate it in your calculator and you come up with the answer 30. And you're done. You put it in the answer box in my math lab and it tells you fantastic. Or there are other words too. OK, now um, we're just going to take a quick review of exponents. We like to use code in mathematics because we're lazy and we don't like to write a whole lot. That's the real truth. 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 is 7 multiplied by itself four times. So a code was developed by somebody for this. And it is that you take this number right here, seven, and that's called the base. And then you write the number of times it's multiplied by itself. You write that up here, and it's called the exponent. Or the power. They're words that can be used interchangeably. Same thing here. Here we have 17 over 18 multiplied by itself five times. Seventeen over eighteen is the base. You're not being asked to come up with a number. In fact, it says right in exponential notation. That means they don't want an answer. They want this written like that. Oh, by the way, up here it says right. Should have said in exponential notation. That means leave the answer that way. Don't calculate 7 to the 4th power. That would be evaluating or simplifying. Those two words are often used interchangeably. However, you have three chances to get this right before it changes problems on you. So if you did say 7 to the 4th power, 7 carat 4, which would be 2401. If you actually did type 20, wait a minute, 24, twenty four. If you put that in the answer box, you would have gotten a message that said, this is an error because it's the right answer, but the wrong form. And then you would know, aha, I should have written it like that. Seven to the fourth power. Put that in the answer box. Check your answer. And it would say correct, fantastic, etc. All right, so our answer here is going to be 17 over 18. That's the base. Raised to the power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 17 over 18 raised to the fifth power where this is the base, 
This is the exponent, and we're actually going to be using those words this time. So it's important that you know what they mean. Now this time, notice we see the word evaluate, evaluate. We're going to actually come up with an answer. 23 to the zero power. There's a rule, very important rule, that says that any number raised to the zero power is one. So 23 to the zero power is one. That's it. I need to tell you that if you had any number, I usually use three for any number, um, but I should use something different. How about six? Doesn't matter. Negative six to the zero power, the answer would not be one because zero is only working on the six. Because there are no parentheses, the, ne the negative sign out here is really negative one times six to the zero. So that would be negative one times six to the zero is one. And negative one times one would be negative one. Now, if you had had negative six in parentheses <clears throat> like this, raised to the zero power, then the negative is stuck onto the six. It is the number negative six being raised to the zero power. So the answer is one. This is very tricky. Or it can be. Something you have to learn. If you haven't already. And since there are a lot of people who were in my intermediate algebra class here right now, um, they already know it, which is good. They better know it. Okay, now we're going to evaluate this. That means come up with an answer. You've got the fraction 7 ninths or 7 over 9, the whole thing raised to the 1 power. Well, it doesn't matter that, that it's raised to the 1 power. Any number raised to the one power is that number. So seven ninths raised to the one power is seven ninths. Uh uh, that's a one. Seven ninths. Okay, everybody okay? If you're not, speak up. Unmute yourself and speak up. All right, here we go. Now, those rules of exponents, you had to memorize them before. It's important that you memorize them now. Why? because at the end of the semester, we're gonna be doing something very advanced that's based on the rule of exponents. The rules of exponents. But notice here that the bases are the exact same number. So I'm gonna write that up here, bases, are 
the same. When bases are the same, we call them like bases. When you have uh, these, this number being multiplied by this number, but it's the bases that are the same, what you do is you write down the base and you add the exponents. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. Okay, I'm going to write that down. Multiply. Like. Bases. Add. Exponents. Now, 9 plus 6 is 15. Uh, this is actually a multiple choice problem. And um, that's the right answer there. This is called the product rule of exponents. Now, the power rule of exponents is different. Here you have one base being raised to a power, and this is raised to another power, or it could be the same power. But what you have is a base raised to a power and then raised to a power again. This is called the power rule for exponents. What you do here, well, is you take 14 and you raise it to the 10 times 4. So that will be 14 to the 40 power. And there is no way, well, I say that, let's try it. Fourteen. This carrot right here, um, called a carrot, that gives you a, an exponent box up there. So let's see, let, let's bring down the big viewer so you can see it. So there I have 14 and I'm about to write 40 in here. Then I'm going to hit enter. Woo! This is scientific notation. When numbers get very, 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 very large or very, 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 very small, the TI automatically changes to scientific notation whether you want it or not. Okay, and you will learn how to use scientific notation in your science classes. But I just thought I'd tell you that's what I expected to happen. Okay, you don't need to know anything about scientific notation. So I'm going to leave the answer like this and assume that this is what they want. They being the My Math Lab people. So the base raised to the power, raised to the power again, the a power again, means you multiply the powers. You keep the same base. So 14 to the 10 times 4 is 14 to the 40. Okay, now coming straight over here, we have the quotient rule. 
for exponents. Here we have, let me write it a little bigger, 2 to the third divided by 2 to the eighth. And you can see it's multiple choice. When you, when the bases are the same, when you have like bases and you're dividing, what you do is you write the base once and you subtract the exponents. And that would be two to the negative five, but we're not there yet. So the book gave you this as your answer and you would choose A and that would be the correct answer. You would check your answer. You can see we're going to be dealing with negative exponents here. Um, but first we have a power rule problem. And I am going to come up to give myself more room. I'm going to come up there and start there and put a line right there. Okay. What this is, we have 6x to the 7th, y to the 3rd, all in parentheses. So our base is actually 6x to the 7th, y to the 3rd. Raised to the 2nd power. Going to make that a little large. And then back it up. There we are. Okay. So what does this mean? This means that 6 is going to be raised to the second power. X to the seventh is go <clears throat> going to be raised. Drink a coffee. My throat gets really dry. 6 to the second power times X to the seventh to the second power times Y to the third to the second power. So here's what you would write first. 6 to the second power, x to the seventh to the second power, y to the third to the second power. Now, 6 to the second power is 36. x to the seventh raised to the 2 is going to be x to the 7 times 2. And y to the 3rd raised to the 2 is y to the 3 times 2. And our final answer will be 36 x to the 14th power y to the sixth power. And that would be what you would put in the answer box, probably. They might want you to keep six to the two, but I don't think so. So six to the two, x to the seventh to the two, y to the third to the two. That's the way we would do this by the power rule. Let's save this. Okay. Now we get to negative exponents. When you see a negative exponent, it means that the base is in the wrong position. What are the positions for numbers? Position, yes. The positions are up and down. 
You're either up or you're down. It's like life is a two-story apartment building. There are the people who live on top and the people who live on the bottom. This person, if you want to think of it that way, this variable, this base, is on top right now, but it wanted a first floor apartment and it's not happy. So what we have to do is take this guy and move it down there. Easy. Why? to the positive two, and I put a one up here. That is the correct answer. Y to the negative two is really one over Y to the positive two. Now over here, we have one over Q to the negative fifth. Okay, let's go back to our apartment building. Q to the negative five is down here in this apartment right here. And Q to the negative five is very, very unhappy. It wants to move upstairs where it will, <clears throat> where it will become Q to the positive five. Notice a negative power does not make the variable negative. Has nothing to do with the sign in front of the variable. It only has to do with are you up or are you down? That's it. So, we take poor unhappy Q to the negative five, move him upstairs. And put a one in down here temporarily. But then we have to stop and think, oh, Q to the negative, uh, Q to the positive five over one is just Q to the five. So, one over Q to the negative five equals Q to the positive five. It changes the position. That's it. The location. Now here's a problem. We're going to rewrite this as a positive exponent, which means we're going to change location. And then evaluate means we're going to find the answer. Okay, the base is negative four in parentheses. Right now, negative four is living upstairs and is unhappy living upstairs. So my first thing to do is to put negative four to the negative two up here, upstairs. He wanted to go down there to move down here. So when we move him, I'm going to put a, it over a one. That means there's an empty apartment downstairs. Once our little negative four 
moves downstairs, it becomes a happy two. And my one goes up here because now the upstairs apartment is vacant. Now I have to ask myself, what is negative four squared? Well, there are two ways to do it. Take negative four and multiply it by negative four. Negative four is being multiplied by itself two times. Negative four times negative four is positive 16, or you can do it on a calculator. But one over 16 is our answer. Oh, oh, is our answer. One over 16. One sixteenth. Those negative exponents can be tricky. Notice, though, that negative 4 remained a negative 4 until it got multiplied by another negative 4. This negative 2 power had nothing at all to do with that negative sign in front of the 4. Okay. I want to write an example. Example. Negative four raised to the negative two is one over 16. We just found that out. But negative four times negative two is positive eight. If that had been times negative two, it would have given us the answer positive eight. But the fact that the power is negative means we've got to deal with this question of where, 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 where? Where does that base wanna go? So I have a question. Yes. Um, negative exponents don't wanna be upstairs and then if the exponents are um, downstairs, right? The way that you're, you're giving the example. Yes. They want to go upstairs? Yes, they want to go to the other place. When they're like, negative. When, they're, when the power is negative, yes. Okay. That just means it wants to go to the other place. Mm, I see. But not the number. It doesn't matter. The, if the base, it can be negative. It doesn't want to change. It will just eventually be resolved. Or That's right. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Very good. I know it's it's crazy. <laughs> Having been a student, I think my my first uh, reaction was WTF. Before there were there was texting, you just had to say the words. You know, but I probably did say that. You gotta be kidding me. That can't be real. Okay, we're gonna use the product rule. Product means multiply. The bases are the same. So we're gonna write the base once. We're going to add the exponents. So that's going to be 3 to the negative 6 plus 3. That'll be negative 3. So this will be 1 over 3 to the positive 3. And then here's simplify. It means the same thing as evaluate in this context. 
we've got to figure out what three times three times three is. And three times three times three, three times three is nine times three, that's 27. Or you can just put it in your calculator to begin with. This is going to be one over 27, and that's your answer. Notice this was <clears throat> two steps, <clears throat> kind of two steps. We did this part. That was step one. Then we did this part. That was step two. Oh, and then we had to find the answer. So that was like step three. Whoops, oops, oops. There. Please do speak up if you if, if I seem to be making a mistake. I might be. My mind wanders like everybody else's. I'm as capable as everybody else of making a mistake. OK, now we're getting a little challenging here. We're going to use the quotient rule. Quotient means divide. Let me put rule up here and rule down here. The bases are the same. The bases are eight and eight. So I'm going to write the base once, eight, and then when I use the quotient rule, I subtract exponents. So I'm going to have eight minus negative seven. Look at stuff like that when you're doing this. I'm sorry. Well, eight minus negative seven is eight plus seven, so I'm drawing this out and putting more steps than you probably would. That's life. So this is going to be eight to the 15th power. I think eight plus seven is 15, yes. Notice the negative seven is this negative seven. You've got the top power minus the bottom power, even when it's negative. And then whenever you have, whenever you subtract a negative number, the negative negative changes to a plus. I'm going to write that negative negative equals plus. OK, now. We're getting to the end of the first part. After this, we're going to take like a five minute break, and I recommend that everybody restart their computer, which will, of course, cancel their 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 set here. But that if if you restart, then then your memory, it, not your memory, hopefully, but the memory in your computer will get a chance to clear out and start again from the beginning so you'll be less likely to have a crash. If you do have a crash, don't worry. Just get her started again and come back in. But we're going to do this. 
we're going to look at algebraic expressions. We're going to be doing a lot with algebraic expressions. We're going to change their name, but they'll still be algebraic expressions. But right now, they're algebraic expressions. Here's our first one. We have 10 times m plus 20 times n minus 19 times m plus 7 times n. We have to collect like terms. And that's the terminology, the normal terminology to use. Collect like terms. Well, what are like terms? Here are the like terms. The M terms are like terms, and the N terms are like terms. We have to combine them. So that will give me 10M minus 19M plus 20N plus 7N. Now, I do that. I do that. 10 minus 19 is negative 9. So this is negative 9M plus 20, well, 20 plus 7 is 27N. So I have combined my like terms. Now here I'm going to distribute. And since negative signs really mean negative one, I can distribute signs <clears throat> just like I distribute numbers. This is a positive D. A negative times a positive D is negative D. And a negative times a positive 14 is a minus 14. Minus times plus is minus. And yeah, that changes that to a minus. So there's our answer. We distributed the negative sign. 